Welcome back, 40k fans, to another preview of Psychic Awakening War of the Spider. Now, last time we checked in on Fabulous Bill and his personal manslave Gimply, they were on the run from the nefarious Death Guard after absconding with one of their most treasured relics. But don't worry, Fabulous Bill fans, because the Clone Lord and his sidekick Gimply are not alone in their fight against their pursuers. With them are a whole host of evil Chaos Space Marines at their back, and these beguiled bastards are packing some of the Clone Lord's newest augmentations, whether they want them or not. And that's what we're covering today in the preview. That's right, Fabulous Bill's not on his own, because he's just one model, and it would be silly if it was just him and his, albeit fetching little gimp thing, Gimply, as I affectionately called, go against both the Custodian Guard and the Death Guard. It's just not on. So to signify or to emulate some of the various bargains he's probably struck with the um, Chaos Warbands over the years, he gets to give rules to anyone following him, I suppose, or in his service or in any army or detachment he may be part of. And as you could tell, he's uh, got quite a bit of experience in genetic manipulation and it shows in some of the traits he can give people. For example, Experimental Enhancements. All of Fabulous Bile's terror are... Oh, God. You know, it just, just sums up my day. I try and read out the first preview and I fail miserably. Anyway, what it does is it adds one movement and one strength characteristic to models in units with this Legion trait. So, that's pretty fucking good. One strength and one inch movement. That's mobility and attack power. To all models with this Legion trait. Very, very nice thing. And it seems that it's not just enhancements he's got as well. He's got relics of his own. It makes me, this makes it really weird. I mean, is Fabius Bill going to be like his own codex or how would he fall normally? It, I've, I've got to think after the, after the back end of this, I'm starting to think more and more the Empress children or Chaos range as a whole might be getting divided down to more sub-factions because it just makes sense to have him in the Empress Children Codex. Maybe as an affiliate member? Who knows? But anyway, Relics of Bile. Helm of All Seeing. Ugh, this helm sports an array of additional senses. I missed our word there. I thought I'm never gonna. I'm just gonna fail pronouncing that on the first try. Allowing the wielder to make a tremendous amount of battlefield information in a short space of time. Providing, of course, they have the blah 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 blah, blah sensory organs to process it. Basically, what this thing does, with the model with this relic on the battlefield, you can roll 1d6 for each command point you spend to use stratagem on a 5 plus that command point is refunded. So basically, refund your stratagems. Very nice, but remember, after that FAQ, you can only do that once. 5 plus, you know, command points, nice. Always pays to have a way to get them back. Command points, then feed into our next points, the stratagems. And these are sort of like minor upgrades. I mean, going back to the first one we talked about, we don't know if that's the only upgrade. Like, Fabulous Bill be able to give the entire army in general. Obviously, we'll have to wait to find out. But I think these are like sort of... Well, these are basically short burst upgrades, for want of a better word, that you can give units in an army that is, I'm assuming, led by Fabulous Bill, or at least contains Fabulous Bill. So, we'll go through them. One command point. Macro sensitive sinews. Macro sensitive sinews. <sighs> Macro bibbly wibbly sinews. Injecting auto stimulants into their enhanced muscles. These war, these warriors leap and bound across the battlefield. You know, I'm an adult. I'm a fully grown man. I should be able to read a sentence without tripping over myself. Uh, one command point, use this strategy at the start of your movement phase, select one, creations of bile infantry unit, excluding chaos cultists, from your army, until the end of that turn, this unit can be chosen to charge, even the advanced of this turn, and when an advanced or charge roll is made, this unit add one to the result. That is fantastic. One command point for being able to advance and charge. I don't... I can't begin to explain to you how good being able to advance and charge is, especially if you're close combat army. Possessed, I think they're close combat monsters. Keen them up with like 1 plus strength, 1 plus movement. Combined with this, very, very nice. 
Monstrous visages. Ah, got that one right. One command point. Bile's experimental... <sighs> Bile's experimental minestrones have left these warriors as freakish monsters, cursed with clusters of compounded eyes, distended fang-stuffed jaws, or myriad of other grotesqueries. They are all hideous to behold. Use this stratagem at the start of any phase. Select War of Creations of Bile of Retreat unit from your army, excluding Chaos Cultists. Until the end of the turn, I'm resolving the attack made by an enemy model within six of that unit, so trap one from the hit roll. So, minus one to hit for everything around it within six. Good to close combat for a little bit of extra survivability. Very, very nice. Again, for one command point. Y you can't expect, you know, agents of bile or creations of bile to get many things in Psychic Awakening because actually, it's, there's only so much you can have, like, an army built around one dude just out of nowhere. But. Like I say, just, just hold fire, guys, until you get your own Empress Children Codex, because I can't see why Fabulous Bar would not be in it, eventually. But yeah, that brings us to the end. Whoa, 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 whoa. Whoa, whoa. No, it doesn't. Sit back down. I'm not done talking to you yet. Because Warhammer, the new edition, and a new preview at the same day. How very nice is this? And it's one that I was interested in, when they did the preview two weeks ago, or two or three weeks ago now, yeah, whatever. Basically, blast weapons. Now, they made it out in the preview video, the animated thing, that uh, certain weapons will be doing extra damage or have extra effects against horde armies. And as a Tyranid player, that's kind of my jam. You know, I take gaunts by the shovelful. Many a time I've had, like, teed up my army with my opponents on the other end, just think to themselves, that's, that's too many bodies. I can't deal with it. And just have them run across the table and just weather the firepower by sheer weight of numbers. So obviously, blast weapons having an effect on horde armies, it kind of got me... I wouldn't say interested. It, it got me not concerned. Oh, what's the word I'm looking for? I was... I'm keen to know what it was about. So here it is. Blast weapons. Some weapons have the blast listed in their profiles abilities. These are referred to as blast weapons. In addition to the normal rules, the following rules apply to blast weapons. If a blast weapon targets a unit that has between 6 and 10 models, it always makes a minimum of 3 attacks. So, if when determining how many attacks are made with this weapon, the dice roll results in less than 3 attacks being made, make 3 instead. So, for example, it gives here, uh, throw a d6 grenade, and you roll a 2, but it has more than 6 models in the unit that you're targeting, becomes a 3. Simple enough. 2. Oh, excuse me. When a blast weapon targets a unit that has 11 or more models, it always makes the maximum amount. So, always going to be 6. If it's a d6, it's always going to be 6. If it's 2d6, it's always going to be 2 6s, 12. So, yeah, horde armies, you're always going to get hit full force in the face with these blast weapons. That is... Uh, it's going to make Horde armies slightly less viable. Perhaps this is what they... That's perhaps what this was intending. Perhaps the, the game designers got all the feedback from the meta players saying, Hey, you know, Horde armies, you could just take 10 bazillion gaunts and it doesn't matter how meta cookie cutter your army list is, you're just never going to kill more. And that's probably what this is trying to, you know, affect. Or it might just be a narrative thing that they want to convey that some weapons, you know, when they hit, and they're hitting a big swarm of things, they do maximum damage. Could be a little bit of A, could be a little B, it could be a healthy mix of both. We don't know. But, yeah, it's... It's... Yeah, if, it's gonna make me rethink playing Horde, my Horde army list for the time being when this drops out. But, you never know, we might get something on the other end of this to sort of balance it out. Hordes might get extra survivability. You never know. A few of the examples here they gave of, obviously, uh, blast weapons. Barb Strangler for Tyranids, so quite nice that they start with something that I'm familiar with. Uh, that's a weapon that can go on Tyranid Warriors, Carnifex, all sorts of stuff, so that's quite nice. Yeah, getting anti 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 horde stuff myself. Yeah, that's quite good, I'll take that. Death Strike Missiles, yeah, Imperial Guard, they're gonna have all the blast weapons. D Cannon, so Eldar players get access to blast as well, that's quite powerful. Squig Launcher, because Orcs, why not? And uh Fledgem, Pelgem, uh, I'm assuming that's Death Guard or something. 
snot bombardment. Very nice. A little bit of a, a little bit more blood to go through. Ah, now this, this I did read this earlier. Blast weapons cannot be fired with an engagement range. Blast weapons can never be used to make attacks against a unit that is within engagement range of the firing models unit, even if the weapon has the pistol type or is firing a or if the firing model is a vehicle or a monster, firing high explosives at point blank range is simply unwise. That's good. So, assuming that you've still got horde armies left at the end of it, you can tie these big guns down with bodies, which is it's it's nice. It's thematic. I mean, you wouldn't you wouldn't launch. That depends, doesn't it? I mean, it always says it says there that firing high explosives at point blank range is simply unwise. I mean, if you know the imperial guard guardsmen on that particular um missile whatever it's called havoc missile no not havoc missile that's chaos uh death strike missile yeah just scroll to see that is if he knows the end is nigh he might just be spiral enough to like launch the thing at point blind range perhaps it's just too hard to write that kind of rule on the profile let's say if this thing is reduced to one wound you can fire it at point blank range and it'll kill the unit, do more wounds and all the yada yada yada. But you know, it's, you know, some, you say it's, it's simply unwise, but in the, in the universal 40k, unwise shit is done all the time by lots of people. I can, I can honestly see a lot of armies firing at point blank range just because they can. And yeah, well, that's it. That's it for today's preview. Again, very nice to see Fabulous Bill and Gimply, his little manservant, getting, um, Get you to buff the units that are following them. And it'll be interesting to see how that develops. And, yeah, blast weapons. Bad news for hordes, but they don't work in all scenarios. Hmm, fair enough. Uh, let me know what you guys think down in the comments below. Thumbs up, thumbs down, shake it all around, do the hokey pokey, turn yourself around, all that shit. Anyway, I will uh, see you guys next time. See you later.